We just had this paper that came out that showed BHB and citrate. You know, that's the medical food that we designed at Santa Barbara Nutrients. That has a similar effect in being able to slow progression. It seems to work from different angles or different mechanisms, but BHB and citrate have some unique properties that seem together work synergistically. And we were able to show that that was prevented in young animals and in adult animals. It slowed the progression and modestly reduced it or reversed some of the signs. Um, so it seems like it has some potential to do something in future trials. So we've got a lot of evidence that says that BHB might be a very effective strategy, but it's not a drug and it's not like something that's approved for PKD. It's just something that we're hopefully going to keep learning more about. And I have even more research that's going to come out hopefully soon enough that will even give us more information, like preclinical data to kind of support that idea that BHB is effective. One of the things about BHB is it's when you take it, it's consumed very rapidly. And the main organs that eat up BHB are the heart and the kidneys. They're the ones that consume the most BHB. If you're doing a ketogenic diet, you have all this BHB that goes up. Point of BHB and evolutionary adaptation is to give energy to the brain because the brain has obligate glycolytic needs. So it requires glucose for some of its processes, but a lot of those processes can also be given BHB. It can't consume fatty acids the way that other tissues can. As you go along and become more fat adapted or keto adapted, you actually stop giving BHB to other peripheral tissues like the muscles and these other tissues. Um, they just take fatty acids and they just become resistant to using BHB. So most of the BHB is getting consumed by the brain. But early on, a lot of the BHB, all the tissues have access to it. So they just eat it up as soon as they see it. So you're not going to see a big change in BHB levels necessarily if you were to drink BHB because everything's going to eat it. But if you were in a keto adapted state, only tissues that are going to eat it are going to be the brain, the heart, and the kidneys primarily. And so it's kind of an interesting problem to try to figure out like, well, what is like the actual amount of BHB that's getting to the kidney? Most people are woefully over sodiumed and under potassiumed just in general. It's very easy to get a lot of sodium in the diet. Potassium ratio is really important. And just that alone is something that people really don't value enough for their kidneys. I get confused by this because I hear a lot like about the potassium. People are trying to avoid potassium a lot of times. Because it's the old textbook kidney diet recommendation, right? That so many have been blanketed with. So they come in thinking that it's a horrible thing. Um, and I really misled one of those misnomers about dietary education and being individualized and what's right for you. So Right. So I yeah. know that there's individuals, once they get to a very late stage, then you start to get into this hyperkalemia issue where your kidneys are just not working at that point. But prior to that, potassium is important for actually getting rid of sodium and improving blood pressure. If you start restricting sodium and restricting potassium, your blood pressure can go up because your body needs to hold on to as much sodium as it can. And it's, it really messes with the the excretion and retention of water. I think that that's like a big part of like the benefit of, of potassium as well. So it's like another reason we wanted it to have extra potassium and just to be able to help with that kidney function. Uh, that's a big part of it as well. So uh, we did think a, lo a lot about like what minerals to use. You do. And a lot of clients going into ketosis for the first time when they experience that flushing of electrolytes and fluid, ketocitra is such a awesome parallel to that to help replenish and avoid things like the keto flu or lessen the symptoms for certain. So right. it's a nice, it's a nice partner to the ketogenic diet. Yeah. And most sure. people are getting, I mean, if you salt food to taste, like if you're eating a whole food diet, um, sodium is a lot harder to get a hold of. Just if you're eating plants and vegetables and, and meat and whatnot, it's just, there's not a lot of sodium in there. It's mostly potassium is in plants. So you end up having to salt your food to taste already to get your sodium. For certain, the amount of people that we actually have to tell to increase their sodium intake due to cramps or mild headaches, um, you know, cramps waking them up at night, is they're actually quite amazed because as long as they've known PKD, they've been following a pretty good sodium restriction. And then we're saying, well, you need a little bit more or so. It's, it's, it's always one of the great side effects of, of the ketogenic diet, for sure. Yeah. So. I mean, if anybody's done the keto diet and had leg cramps, I mean, you know that it's like, you know, how important sodium and potassium is. 